So one of the questions I get asked quite often is, what's the best way to design something in Fusion? Should I use the whole command or should I use a circle on a sketch? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and some methods that I use that might help you in your design. So let's take a look. So like I mentioned in the intro, I get asked quite often, what's the right way to model something in Fusion? And honestly, there's really not a right way to do it. There's multiple different ways to design something in Fusion. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the different things that I think about as I'm modeling something in Fusion. And I'm going to share those tips and methods with you. So hopefully that will help you in your future designs. I'm going to be using this pretty simple model and walking through what kind of goes through my head as I'm modeling. Um, I'm also going to include this drawing as a link in the video. That way you can reference it and try and recreate this model uh, if you want to. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion. Uh, I'm going to verify that I'm in millimeters because the drawing is in millimeters. And we'll start out by creating a component. And I'm just going to go ahead and call it a rod guide. And I'll start with a sketch on the front. And the reason I'm doing that is as we take a look at this drawing, I like to break it down into its simplest form. And as we look at this kind of front view, and I would say this is kind of like the side view, I can see some basic shapes here. There's basically three rectangles, an 80 by 15, an 80 by 20, and a 30 by 16 rectangles. So I'm going to start out with that basic shape and then extrude it to the correct thickness. You can kind of see that would define the basic shape. Then I'll come along and start working on some of the other shape of it. So let's go ahead and start with those rectangles. Now I personally, I like to just kind of draw the shape and not type in the dimensions as I'm drawing. Again, that's just a personal preference. So I just kind of draw the basic shape kind of like so. Then I come in and add in my dimensions. So I know that this overall dimension here is 80. And this one here, again, I'm just referencing the drawing, is 15. This guy here is 80. And so I'm just adding in these dimensions. Now, I want to do this height here, so I'm going to specify from there to there is 20. And this one here is 30. And then finally, this one here is 16. And when I enter in that dimension, I can see that all the lines have turned black. If I expand open my sketch, I can see that it has a lock symbol, which means everything's locked down. It's a fully constrained sketch. Now, I could trim out these segments, but there's no need to. Um, in fact, I prefer not to because you'll notice if I start doing that, I might get um, some, some warning saying constraints and dimensions have been removed, etc. And it, it might, you know, make my sketch a little bit more confusing. So I like to just basically keep it as it was, those three rectangles. So I'm going to say finish sketch. I'll just draw a box around everything to select all of my profiles. And I personally like to right click because it shows me the commands that make sense. Instead of trying to find the command up in the menu, I just pre-select, which is what I've done by drawing the window around my profiles. I right click and I can say extrude. I'll start to drag and the total distance is 60 according to the drawing. So what we've done now is, and here's that 60 dimension right here. We just started with the three basic shapes, the three rectangles, and we extruded it the 60 millimeters. So then I kind of go from, you know, large to small. So we did the, the major shape. What's the next biggest thing? And I would say the next biggest thing is probably this fillet across the top. And we can see that it's a radius of 30, which kind of makes sense. So this is a radius of 30 here and a radius of 30 here, which would total up to be 60. So here's where the first thought process comes in. Should I go ahead and fillet these two edges a radius of 30, like so? And we can see this has two edges, a radius of 30, and I get that result. And I would say probably not, 
because we have to think of is this shape ever going to change down the road? Is it ever going to change, for example, the width? And what I mean by that is if we come in and we change it from maybe 60 millimeters to 80 millimeters, notice what happens. These have to stay the 30 millimeter radius. So it added this little flat segment in here. Fusion did exactly what we told it to, right? Now, I, I always want it to be rounded like that, so I'm going to undo back. And instead of using the regular fillet command, I'm going to use full round fillet. And what this allows us to do is I'm going to hover over this face, and you'll notice some faces turn blue. And I'm hovering over the face that I want to round over, but I'm going to move to the left and you'll notice that the two side walls have now turned blue. And those are the, the faces that are going to be tangent to our rounded face. So, for example, if I click here, you can see that those faces are tangent to our rounded face. If I had clicked here, you can see that these faces are tangent to that face there. So, you always want to move your cursor and get the, the blue faces to be tangent to your rounded face. So I'm going to click here and now I have what's called a full round fillet. I'll go ahead and say okay and you'll notice I didn't even have to type in a radius of 30. And what's nice about this is if we ever change the thickness of our part, so from 60 to 80, you'll notice that it had to change the full round and there's no flat segment. So it's changed its height a little bit. So you can kind of see how this face went down, but that is still a full round fillet. So that's one of the first things I would recommend um, is if you think the part is gonna change, think about what feature you should use. So for example, a full round fillet in this case. Okay, going back to the drawing, I would say kind of the next thing I would probably work on is maybe this hole. And we can see it's a diameter of 20 that goes all the way through. So let's go back here. And this is probably, probably the number one question I get is, should I use the hole command or should I create a sketch? So let's approach both of those. So I'm going to use the hole command first. And I'm going to just click on this face. Now, I purposely kind of click off to the side. I don't click exactly where I want the hole. I'm going to click over here. And you can see that, sure enough, it put the hole kind of where I clicked. And the reason for that is now I can kind of click and drag. And you can see, it's a little hard to see, there's two white dots. There's one right here that just it just snapped to. And then there's one down here. This first white dot is the center of this radius that we just created, this full round fillet. So that's the center of that. This other one is the center of this whole face. So obviously we want this top white dot and then you'll notice as I get near it, it snaps right to it. Then I can come over here and I can specify the total diameter, which in this case is supposed to be 20. Then it's asking for the extents. And the distance right now it's set to 15. Um, let's just say, let's just say it was set to 25. So it would look like something like that, for example. Well, I might want to change this to, for example, all, go all the way through the part. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And it just created a hole at the center of this radius. And that is much faster and I think much easier than having to create a sketch. And I'll, I'll actually undo and create a sketch and show you why. However, I just introduced a mistake. And the, the mistake I introduced was using the all. Because one thing you have to think about is what could potentially happen to this part. For example, if we change this sketch and we change this dimension from like 30 to 50 and I say OK, notice what happened right? We told this hole to go all the way through the part. Well, this part goes all the way over here, and we just changed the height of this little leg to be taller, so that hole is going all the way through, and it's now cutting through this leg. So, again, I'm going to undo back. 
what we should probably have done for this whole, instead of saying all, we probably should have said two. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually recreate this whole the right way. So let me go ahead and delete that. I'll say whole, I'm gonna click on here, drag it to that point there. And instead of distance, I'm gonna say two, and I'm gonna click on this face right here. And so I'm referencing that face. And you can see instead of a distance, it says two. I'm gonna verify my diameter is correct. I'll go ahead and say okay. And now if I were to change from that, that 30 to 50, we can see that it does not affect that leg because we told the hole only to go to this face over here. So that's another thing to think about. Now let me go ahead and undo the hole again and let's use a sketch instead. Click on that face, create a sketch, create a circle. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it over here, type in 20. Then I have to create a dimension for the overall height, which according to the drawing is 50. And then I need to create a horizontal dimension, which in this case would be 30. And now we can see that it's fully constrained. Then I would have to come in here and say extrude. And once again, I would come in and say to object, click on that face and say, okay. And you can see we got the same result, but that was, you know, a couple more mouse clicks. And once again, if I were to change the thickness of the part, if we say make this 80, you'll notice that the hole didn't update. And that's because we told it to be 30 millimeters from that edge. So I would have to, instead of, whoops, wrong, wrong sketch, instead of um, putting a 30 in there, actually let me undo back so it undoes the thickness, sorry. Um, instead of the 30, I would want to put in a constraint. So if I would come in here and say horizontal, vertical, click on that point there, and then hold down my shift key to reference the midpoint of this bottom line right here. And you can see that it created a midpoint constraint. So I basically just said, make this point here line up with the middle of this line here. So now if I were to change the thickness to 80, you can see that that hole did move over. But again, I have to remember all this kind of stuff. So I personally like the hole command because I'm gonna undo all the sketches. It, it does that for me automatically just by grabbing this point. And let me just say two here, make sure that's 20, yep. No matter what happens, if I change that from 60 to, let me just go to 85, just to be slightly different, it's gonna go centered. It, it always has to be centered. So I just think that's so much faster. I didn't have to do dimensions. I didn't have to do sketches or anything like that. So I personally like the whole command. The other reason I like it is because you have a lot of options in here. Do you want it counterboard, countersunk? Do you want it tapped, etc.? It just gives you a lot more options that I, I personally find useful. Okay, so the next thing on the drawing is, let me bring the drawing back up real quick, are these little notches right here. Um, and we can see that they're 10 by 16. So let's go ahead and do those real quick. So I'm gonna create a sketch on this front face just by pre-selecting and saying create sketch. And I'll just draw a rectangle over here on the left. And again, I'm not gonna dimension it. I could type in the dimensions. I I don't know, I just like to kind of get the, the sketch drawn first and then I come back and draw the dimensions. That's just me personally. Now I'm gonna draw two rectangles and I'm gonna purposely make them two totally different sizes. And you'll see why here in just a second. Now I'll come in and add my dimensions. So this is supposed to be 10. And this is supposed to be 16. And we can see that those turn black, meaning that that's fully constrained. Now, should I add dimensions over here and make that 16 
and make this 10. I totally could do that. But now if I want to change the size of this, I have to change all of these dimensions. So if I make that 20, I have to come over here and make that 20, right? So that's a lot of extra steps. So instead of doubling up the dimensions, I would use constraints instead. And one of the more powerful ones is this equal constraint. So I'm going to say I want this line and that line to be equal. And I want that line and that line to be equal. And now I only have two dimensions. So if I were to change that 16 to be 20, you could see that that one changed to be 20. If I change that to be 15, that changed to be 15. So very, very simple. And you'll notice my um, sketch is easier to, to read. I don't have a whole bunch of dimensions, etc. Okay. Now, some of you might also say, well, couldn't you just have mirrored that? So let me go ahead and actually, um, let, me, let me go back. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna go forward and get rid of this rectangle. So I draw one rectangle and then couldn't I just mirror it to the other side? Yes, you could. I personally don't like the mirror command and here's why. I'm gonna come into mirror and I select my objects, but now it's asking for a mirror line. I don't have a line to mirror over, so I need to create one. So I'm gonna actually have to come in here and create a line right from the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this midpoint and drag it up. And then I want to change that to be, for example, like a center line. Then now I can come in and select that. And you can see because it's a center line, it assumes that you want that to be your mirror line, which is kind of cool. But notice it adds all of these symmetry um, constraint icons. And to me, it just kind of dirties up the sketch. It just makes it really complicated. Uh, and I find just using the equal constraint is so much easier, less mouse clicks, you know, where I just have two rectangles and I just say equal and equal, and it's just so much cleaner. And I just have to edit those two dimensions and it makes the changes to both rectangles. So I personally like the equal constraint. So I'll go ahead and say finish sketch. I'll extrude these. And I like to start extruding in the direction that I want it to go. Now, in this case, I could say to all because there's nothing in the way. There's no other geometry. And maybe the length of this rod guide would change. So I'm going to go ahead and say cut through all. And again, like I mentioned, maybe down the road, we change the length of this from like 80 to 100. And sure enough, that notch will extrude all the way through. So those are some of the things that I think about as I'm designing these parts. How can I simplify my sketches? How can I um, expect changes down the road and how will that affect my design? So using like full round fillet, using the whole command instead of a sketch, using constraints instead of dimensions so the whole stays centered, for example, um, using the equal constraint instead of multiple dimensions, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully this gives you some ideas. Um, I'll probably create another one of these videos down the road with a more complex design, uh, just to kind of show some of the similar ideas, but you know, how would you design a more complex model? Uh, how would you use some of these um, ideas and processes? So hopefully you learned something new and we'll see you on a future video. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.